Morning everyone, please like and subscribe to our page if you haven't already and tick that, uh, tick that little bell. Um, thanks very much to those who already have, it's really helpful for our little farm. So today's video we've got a compilation of a few different days and we've got a grain delivery, we've got some broadleaf weave, weave spraying, uh, spoon mill comes to visit and we've got more drone footage. So please enjoy and uh, yeah, catch up after the weekend off. So we're going to do some planning today. Get the uh, farm calendar all marked up for different events. And uh, at the moment we've just got slightly higher soil count than we want. So I'm just uh, strip every cow. So stripping means just, uh, well, not fully stripping, but I'm just gonna uh, let a bit of milk out of each quarter by hand, just before I put the machines on them. Just to, uh, just to find any potential infections. And I'll be looking at udder, uh, visually at the udder to see if there's any swelling. So yeah, what, what I'm gonna do is just anything that looks suspicious, I'm gonna use the California Massitis uh, test, so CMT. Um, and it's just this liquid solution. And what we do is we squeeze a bit of milk into here. This is the paddle. And then it only a little bit, and then we squeeze a little bit of the solution in there. And we mix it around. And once it's mixed around, it'll show if there's an infection, it'll show like a gloopier sort of uh, mixture. And that means that there's really uh, some mastitis in the udder. So I'll do that on the suspect cows, check all the other cows, and uh, yeah, hopefully we can get on top of this uh, higher cell count that we want. So we just, uh, I'm just gonna mastitis test, California mastitis test some of the cows that have been on bucket for a little while because sometimes they clear up, and she looks really good. So we've got, we've got nice liquid, liquid test there. There's no glugging in the uh, in the test, so I'm gonna put her back in the vat. She hasn't had mastitis, like she hasn't had antibiotics, so she's she's good to go back in the vat. And um, yeah, so we'll get her back in. We're gonna take that other cow out. So this stuff I'm spraying on the cow's udders is uh, iodine. Just as it'd be used at a, uh, in a hospital to stop infection. So it's uh, used on cow's teeth, stop infection. Stop everything getting up into that teat canal and causing mastitis. Nice fine winter's day. Just gonna get a couple of dry cows out, out to the hills. And um, yeah, one got in, jumped the fence when we were trying to get some springers in the other day, so she has to go back out. And the other one's had a, a bad teat, she got a cut teat, and the vet had to take it off. And um, so we're just gonna dry her off. So drying off means to uh, basically take them out of the herd and get them to come off their milk and that's just by getting them out of the dairy getting them away from that teat and udder stimulation where their body can just uh, naturally start shutting off the milk production process and all our cows get dried off towards the end of their lactation and uh, then they have a couple of months break out in the out in the forest and the dry country with some hay and that sort of thing just a break from the dairy and then they uh, they carve and come back in. The calmer we can take cows um, in and out of the dairy and around the farm, the more milk they produce, the happier they are. And, uh, oh, and uh, it's better for everyone. So really important that sort of low stress hen. We'll go and do this gate across the creek. bring them through the gully dogs are here to help so young Roy and um, then we can do I've got one dry cow in this green paddock up here so we're gonna take her out at the same time as you take these two out it's more drag line shifting the Jeep back in action 
Oh, did it say a bad word, yeah. did it, Roy? Oh, okay, all right. Good work. Got drag lines, just gonna pull the ones from over there, put in this paddock that was grazed on for oh, half a week ago. Get some nitrogen and all the trace elements back on here. I've got a uh, downer cow though, which is a sick cow, Springer's paddock she carved. Got uh, milk fever from lack of certain nutrients. Um, she carved this morning, earlier this morning. She's had two bags. Oh. She's had two bags of Calcijol, subcutaneous injection that uh, that has the right minerals for the cow to get her balance back up. And uh, she's been trying to get up, and she's almost there, um, but she keeps slipping back over onto her back when she tries to get up. So I'm gonna go and help her up with the hip lifters. I'm just gonna pick her up really, really gently, not gonna take her anywhere. Just pick her back legs up so she can uh, stand up. So if I can't get the hip lifters on her this way, I'll flip her over. She's on the downhill slope, so she should, should be flippable. There you go. Had a bit of luck there, so you just gave her a bit of a shunt with the hip lifters and then they slipped off because they weren't on the hip properly. But uh, it was just enough to get her up. She's right now. What do you reckon, girl? So yeah, that's what can happen uh, with proper treatment of milk fever. It's a fairly rapid recovery. The problems begin when they get very, very sore and they're down for too long. That's what we found anyway. So once they're down for a long time, they get so cramped up and sore that when you try to get them off their feet, they just don't want to stand and they, and they can't and then eventually they just, they just go downhill. So she's looking much better than she was this morning. I'm gonna go and park under the new shed. Really, really happy how it's come along. It's actually really handy to be able to park the tractor up there so that in the morning, instead of going having to go over this shed, we can uh, just walk straight out and uh, feed the feed the uh, bales of hay out straight from there rather than having to drive vehicles over the other sheds. So it's been really handy for that. And it's been really good for, uh, we've had a couple of mechanics around to have a look at the, the motorbike and a couple of other things and dad's car and stuff. And it's been good to be able to sort of park things in here. So just uh, got a, just had the agronomist turn up. So went around all the paddocks and I put some different blended fertilizers just to pick up the pasture a bit. We've got uh, a couple of pastures, a couple of paddocks that are a bit de deficient in uh, potassium and phosphorus. Yeah, yeah, there's not really a lot of shade. Yeah, yeah. Little and stuff. Nah, that's true. We tend to favour it a bit more at night. Yeah. Just getting the sprayer filled up with the raw strike. Got the truck coming to do some uh, grain in a sec.
All right, paddock sprayed. Got the broad strike on, so should knock any of these little broadleaf weeds in amongst the permanent pasture. Um, that way it'll be uh, nice and thick for spring. And uh, fold this boom up. Okay, go and see our dad and uh, Graham are going, unloading the grain. And uh, I'll chuck some, um, I'll chuck some soap in this, clean out all the nozzles, make sure it's right for next time. Just getting some hay out. Uh, just we we'll put an extra bit of hay out with the silage every second day, uh, and then two bars of silage just to sort of ration it. Now here, so I'm, uh, getting it out on my own today. So I'm going to hop on the tractor. I'm just going to put it in low, so one low, so it's just going to creep along, jump off, jump on the trailer, and uh, and get it out. It's uh, I think it's fairly safe because I'd never get anyone else to do it this way. some fencing on the near Raybedge Creek. I'm going to spread some of these bulrush seeds. There's a spoon bill over here. I don't see them that often. Usually in the shallow dams. Let's see if I can find them. There he is. Just going to go and spread some of these bulrush seeds over there just up the creek just so they can sort of get a bit of a going along there i think i might lead the spoon bill to it they um <coughs> they're pretty cool they just swish their beak they swish their beak side to side in the mud in the shallow creeks looking for grubs 